Complex numbers are extremely counterintuitive. To assume that a square root of a negative number exists took mathematicians centuries to accept. And when they tell you about the history of complex numbers, they usually say this. People were solving quadratic equations and encountered negative discriminants. Being so dismantled by the inability to solve the equation, they decided to accept the root of minus 1 as a new type of numerical identity. Well, this is nonsense. It took humanity centuries to realize that you can consider negative numbers as well as positive ones, and now you are saying that they just accepted root of minus 1 as a thing? In this video, I'm going to tell you a wonderful story that made mathematicians realize that complex numbers must exist. Girolamo Cardano, who is famously known for discovering the formula for roots of a cubic equation, seems to be the first guy in history who considered complex numbers with seriousness. But in his work, Ars Magna, he dismisses them as subtle as they are useless. Other attempts came from Raphael Bambelli in 1572 and Leibniz in 1702. Even in 1770, the complex numbers remained mysterious and confusing that it was possible for a great Euler to argue that root of minus 2 times root minus 3 is equal to root 6. There was no satisfactory answer to the question, what is a complex number? which frightened mathematicians throughout generations. A first satisfactory answer to it only came in the end of 18th century, from Vessel, Argand and Gauss, who introduced the visual representation of a complex number independently from each other. They said that you can view a plus bi simply as a point on a two-dimensional plane. These vectors obeyed a normal vector addition rule, but the multiplication rule was weird. Multiplying two complex numbers is equivalent to adding the angles they make with positive real direction and multiplying their lengths, which you calculate using Pythagoras. This rule is not obvious but you can at least see that it is consistent with our expectations. 3i is 3 times i. Mathematical traditions in the 16th and 17th centuries were still heavily influenced by ancient Greek mathematics, which was very geometrical. So when someone points out that x squared plus 4x plus 5 has a negative discriminant, anyone from 17th century would reply well, this parabola does not intersect the x-axis, so we will discard this case as useless. Once again, the quadratic formula was not sufficient for overcoming the psychological discomfort of introducing complex numerals. Surprisingly, it was a cubic equation which broke the barrier. This equation is basically saying that we need to find all points of intersection of a cubic and the line 3px plus 2q. Cardano produced a remarkable formula for finding the root of this equation. 30 years after this result, Bambelli encountered something strange. Look at this example. Here, p is 5 and q is 2. So p cubed is greater than q squared meaning that we have a negative number under square root in our formula. But wait, here is x cubed and here is 15x plus 4. Clearly they intersect. But the formula does not work. Bambelli then did a very unpleasant thing. He assumed that a root of a negative 1 was a thing. By this logic, the formula gives us x equals cube root of 2 plus 11i plus cube root of 2 minus 11i. 
we know that this number must be a real value because we can literally see the intersection on the graph. To Bombelli, this was astonishing. Connecting this geometric evidence with algebra leads us to a surprising conclusion. Root of negative 1 is possible and necessary for mathematics.